Hello and welcome to Arctic Retro. Today I have this uh, rather special uh, machine to show you. It's a Tiki 100. This machine is actually a Norwegian computer history. Uh, I have had it for a couple of years, uh, but this machine is from uh, back in the 80s. And it was actually designed and uh, made in Norway. And um, I have made a couple of videos about it a long time ago. You can uh, watch them if you want. There's uh, a little bit more uh, history lesson about this uh, machine. This machine actually has uh, 64 kilobyte of RAM and uh, runs a special type of CPM on a Z80 processor. As you can see, the machine is huge and it uh, weighs a lot too, uh, really heavy. So I'm not really sure if you can call it a microcomputer, but uh, it actually is. <laughs> So let's turn it on and see how it boots up. I have connected my television because it has uh, it has uh, composite out on uh, the back side. So now we're in uh, the Tico uh, system, which is uh, the Norwegian operating system that's actually a CPM, but it's a cloned CPM. And it booted uh, from a floppy drive now, so we can uh, type uh, Dear, but it also has some uh, Norwegian uh, uh, commands like uh, KAT, which is catalog. Now it's running in uh, 80 columns mode, but if you want to use 40 columns, you can just type 40. <laughs> So to go back to 80, obviously you type 80. The Tiki 100 was actually uh, financed uh, by the Norwegian government to be used in schools. It was like uh, the same program as the BBC machines in uh, the UK. So I'm gonna insert another floppy now just to see what's on it. It's a bit of a strange uh, mechanism you need to to insert a floppy, then push this button. <laughs> but sometimes it won't stick. Well, there it's stick. So uh, that uh, floppy might be uh, not working. <laughs> I'm gonna try and boot uh, into it. Just power cycle the machine. Okay, there it came, KPM. <laughs> so here's some um, programs, basic and uh, copy program and uh, Python. I think that is a game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oops. So it's like a snake game. Oops. As you can see, I recapped this board uh, back in April uh, last year. Other programs that I got for this machine, this is some uh, official KUD, which is the, I think it's the Department of uh, Education uh, in Norway back in the day. So it's a 400K floppy. Brum, I think that's a um, text editor. Um, Turbo Pascal. 
if I want to program it, WordStar, yeah, and some uh, spreadsheet. The other floppies, I'm not really sure. I think they're just empty. So that's what I got. Before I open up the machine, let's take a look at the porch on the back. And uh, here's channel 36 uh, video output for uh, the from the RF modulator, PAL video, uh, TTL RGB, and regular RGB, and uh, sound. And one uh, two serial ports RS-232 and one printer port. So my plan for this video, besides uh, this uh, walkthrough, I'm going to install a GoTech drive because I have never uh, done that and uh, uh, one of the reasons for doing that is because I got a bunch of uh, floppy disks for this one. Not the ones that I've shown you, but uh, some other disks and uh, I have a request to uh, convert them into um, files that can be shared on the internet. So my plan is to copy the floppies over to the GoTech uh, drive. All right, uh, let's open the machine and there's uh, a bunch of screws around the whole uh, bottom case and uh, <laughs> the bottom case is of a solid metal. I don't know, maybe it's aluminium. And the label here uh, indicates that it's uh, a revision C model 7. So uh, there seems to be uh, up to 10 models. <laughs> so now I need to turn it around. It's heavy. <laughs> at least 10 kilograms so now we can take off uh, the case and the case seems to be made from uh, fiberglass uh, like the way you make boats I think it's uh, seem a little bit uh, like it's um, have been uh, manual work there's the inside of uh, the machine and it's very clean that's because i have cleaned it before and uh, yeah a lot of metal here too you actually lift up the whole thing this is the power supply and uh, floppy drive obviously so i'm gonna take out these two front screws and then you can lift up uh, this middle plate here so it's really solid built <laughs> uh, actually not many had these computers uh, at home before uh, as I said this was uh, rolled out in schools and uh, I guess every school had one because even my small school with only 100 uh, uh, pupils were equipped with a couple of these however I just finished school uh, the year before they got these machines so I never had any computer on the school but I had a computer at home instead <laughs> all right so that's the motherboard and you can see it's uh, quite uh, huge and there's a lot of TTL uh, logic for the video circuit and there's four uh, expansion ports not really sure what uh, this was equipped with but i know you could get a x86 card i think to run uh, ms dos on this machine all right so i want to hook up a gotek uh, floppy emulator and for that i uh, can use this uh, ribbon cable here but i also want to have uh, the floppy drive uh, connected as well as uh, maybe drive uh, B but for that I need another uh, cable and I actually got this one uh, that I have used before on uh, an Amstrad so I know this can be used here too it's a little bit uh, tight space between here so uh. 
Well, I just realized I can't use this uh, cable uh, directly because it uh, only has one of these uh, floppy connectors and uh, the other two are for uh, edge connectors. So um, I need to add another contact to this one. Uh, sorry, I'm just <laughs> a little bit confused. Uh, it turns out that it is actually this type of edge connector that goes into um, to the floppy. But um, I still need to hook up uh, my GoTech, so um, I have uh, these connectors. I'm gonna add uh, one more. So then this connector goes into uh, the main board, and uh, this one goes into the original floppy, and then I can hook up uh, uh, my GoTech to this one if I add another contact. So let's see if we can make this work. Um, so this um, teeth should uh, punch through the uh, cable and make connections to the leads inside. So I guess it's important that it is uh, aligned properly. And uh, I try there. And I have this small vise. It is so small that it uh, won't fit my bench actually, so I can't <laughs> attach it. All right, so hopefully this is working and I didn't damage the cable, but I'm gonna test it. I'm inserting the new contact and then uh, this one goes to, uh, to the floppy drive. So let's see if it still works. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too short. <laughs> All right, it's in. The machine turned on and the floppy drive was spinning up. Uh, now it says insert a disk and press B. B. Yeah. <laughs> That worked great. Now I know I can use uh, that uh, ribbon cable. Now I should be able to hook up uh, the GoTech and uh, yeah. It needs power, obviously. Uh, it needs uh, 5 volts. This provides both uh, plus 12 volt and uh, plus 5 volts. And the ground is the two middle pins. So you can easily hook it up there, but uh, I'm not going to install this permanently, uh, at least not now. Instead I'm gonna use this temporary uh, 5 volts from a USB adapter. So the GoTech is alive. Actually I, um, I haven't prepared uh, the memory stick yet. I only have a couple of uh, MS-DOS images. But let's see if we can shift to B. So it actually it tried to uh, access B, but it says uh, wrong plate, uh, gall plata, uh, wrong plate, wrong disk. <laughs> when it comes to uh, software and uh, resources about uh, TK100, there isn't really much uh, online, but uh, there's a few pages, uh, Norwegian pages, this one, Sunby system, uh, sunby.com and uh, you also hear he links to uh, Dupedal. Osbjorn and Karstein Dupedal. Here's a list of uh, applications. School applications. Uh, <laughs> CPM stuff. Games. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff. System uh, diskettes. And here's a link to uh, Dupedal uh, resource uh, page uh, for TK100 which uh, has a lot of uh, programs that are zipped and can be downloaded. And uh, I have prepared uh, now uh, the GoTech um, drive and uh, I added four DSK files, which is uh, disk images and uh, yeah, it's Invaders, uh, Crossword, MS Copy and Turbo Pascal. So let's see if uh, these work now. What? I got it uh, correctly the second time. I thought you had to turn it uh, twice at least. <laughs>
Okay, so let's uh, turn on and see. So now it boots into the original floppy. I think you can change that by some jumper settings. Uh, I'm gonna investigate that uh, later. As you can see, there is a slight issue with uh, the picture and that is that the first uh, line, at least uh, one or two pixels are not uh, visible, but I think that's okay. Um, all right, so now let's see if we switch to drive B. Yes, <laughs> so now it is actually uh, on uh, the Gotik drive and the uh, disk image uh, number one. So let's see what's on that. All right, there's uh, some uh, crossword uh, basic uh, readme file. Let's see what's on the readme less meg file. Less meg means read me. Okay, so this is a basic crossword. Um, yeah, it's a documentation. <laughs> and a crossword program in basic. Let's start basic. Contiki basic. Actually, the machine was uh, first called Contiki, but uh, they got into trouble because of uh, Tor Heyerdahl had uh, the rights for that name and uh, they changed it to Tiki 100 later. But I don't know how to um, uh, load program. Let's try just load. Really? <laughs> it was actually the load command. <laughs> Let's see, list. There it is, crossword generator. Quite a large program and a real indentation. <laughs> That's great. Run. Well, the colors doesn't seem right. <laughs> so it's a bit gray color. I just adjusted a little bit now. And uh, so I think you can generate a crossword uh, by typing uh, some words. I don't know. <laughs> well, that seems a bit boring. So I'm uh, getting out of this. I have uh, disconnected uh, the original floppy and uh, now see if I can boot into a disk image on the GoTech. Nope, it won't put from the GoTech. So uh, there's probably some jumper I need to set. The GoTech is actually set up as a drive zero uh, one. Uh, so I just need to f to move this jumper to S zero for. Uh, Drive A, if only I can get it out. So S0 is that one. So now it should act as A and be able to boot from. And there you go, it actually booted straight into A from the GoTech. So this is actually uh, Turbo Pascal, I think. Borland. Yeah, Turbo Pascal, copyright 1983-84 by Borland Inc. <laughs> I actually uh, did program in uh, Turbo Pascal back in the day. The first programming course I attended in the engineering college was in fact uh, programming in Turbo Pascal, but uh, back then it was in uh, MS-DOS. This should be a game, uh, Tiki Invader. Yeah, 
This is programmed by Kim Oehus in 1985. You use the uh, return and set an X. Let's try it. <laughs> Great, but uh, I realized there is uh, no colors and uh, I know this uh, game has colors, so uh, <laughs> maybe I should use another cable. So I'm switching to the video out. Let's see. Yeah, there's colors. Nice. But still no sound. Well, there's a sound port too on the back. I'm gonna hook that up. No, still no sound. Yeah, there is sound. <laughs> it was a little low. <laughs> cool. Oh man. Come on. No. Yes. <laughs> anyway, what I'm gonna try to do now is to copy a physical floppy uh, from the disk drive to the GoTech drive. And for that I am using a raw copy program. Need to take a look at that push button. <laughs> Onto the GoTech uh, USB drive, I only have uh, three uh, images already, so uh, I'm gonna overwrite those if it is possible. So let's see. Raw copy from A to no, I don't want to overwrite <laughs> the A disk. So I need to find out how to configure this. All right, so there's some options. You just uh, type uh, row copy uh, B. Okay, so from A to B. Yeah, that's uh, correct. Seems to be writing, promising. It only takes seven uh, tracks at a time, <laughs> or eight. Zero seven is, is eight. So this is a Norwegian uh, operating system and uh, applications. So uh, the text is Norwegian, uh, obviously. That was the 40 tracks and the uh, copying is done. No, I don't want to make another copy. Not now. All right, let's see if that actually uh, made a copy onto uh, B. No, B should be the same uh, as A. Yes, it is. Nice. All right, uh, now the boring job starts and uh, that is uh, that first I'm gonna copy all uh, my own floppies uh, and uh, then I'm gonna copy a lot more. <laughs> I actually got these four boxes full of uh, Tiki 100 diskettes of uh, unknown uh, contents. Um, so uh, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> 
I'm gonna do this in uh, batches of uh, 10 disks and I'm gonna write down uh, the content for each file and I have prepared 10 um, images here so I already copied uh, the number 0 so now it's uh, number 1 so now I'm gonna copy this one it's called uh, KUD1 educational software so now I will be busy copying floppy disks for a couple of hours <laughs> it's good that it's a public holiday today so I have no work to do <laughs> I finished with my own disks and there were no read errors however I have started now on the discs in the boxes and um, this far every floppy has a read error so um, that's not a good sign let's see this one however the copy program just continues and um, yeah I'm not really sure how um, that will turn out on the disk image on the USB stick So there's a read error on that one too and it asks if I want to continue and I uh, just say yes and uh, it actually does continue but I'm not really sure that uh, these disks are okay. Maybe the copy program just uh, writes uh, a blank uh, track when uh, a read error occurs. I actually do have a spare floppy drive for the Tiki and I am thinking maybe I should try this one see if I get a better result uh, with the regards to the uh, read errors uh, however I'm just gonna open it up and clean the, uh, the read write head this drive actually looks to be in uh, good condition so um, yeah not much dirt or anything This is the read and write head and I'm just gonna wipe it gently with some uh, alcohol. Then I use a dry cotton swab to uh, wipe off. This actually looks like uh, it's uh, never been used and I actually haven't tried this before so uh, be excited to see if it works. I've hooked it up and uh, this one has a much better uh, eject mechanism. So let's see if uh, this one works. Yes, it actually worked. However, <laughs> the connector is uh, the opposite uh, direction than the other uh, disc. So, uh, so much for uh, standards. Okay, let's try this one then. And I'm gonna retry the first disc that failed. It seemed to be struggling a bit but it uh, did not report an error so uh, seems to be better yes the whole disk was uh, read without error so uh, that's a good thing Phew. inserting the final disk uh, after copying uh, 70 floppies uh, I think I used at least two straight hours uh, this uh, Oops, this reminds me of back in the day when I <laughs> had the Commodore 64 and uh, swapped disc with friends. There haven't been a lot of uh, games on these floppies, uh, mostly business software and uh, programming uh, utilities. So I have made a catalog of uh, all the floppies and uh, the cross indicates a read error. However, the copy program just continues, so I'm not really sure if... Uh, that's a real error and as you can see on this box there were only three floppies with read errors however on the box number three 
uh, there's only four of uh, the 13, the 14 uh, floppies was copied without read error. Anyway, the ones with the error I will retry a couple of times and maybe try some uh, dirty tricks to clean the disk. Alright, so I'm just testing out some of the software that I copied running from the GoTech and this is uh, SuperCalc 2. So this is uh, obviously a spreadsheet like Excel. So let's see if we can uh, calculate something if it is uh, like Excel. So let's enter sum. In Excel you enter sum like A1 through A2. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so uh, <laughs> that's how you sum in uh, SuperCalc, which I have never used before. <laughs> what about this one? It's called ARC. <laughs> okay, it's uh, Contiki ARC, and ARC is uh, the Norwegian word for uh, sheet so this is another uh, spreadsheet a little bit different let's try the sum yes it is the same what about this one streken This is a drawing program. All right, so uh, how do you <laughs> control? Well, you use the, the arrow keys. I switched to the older uh, RGB output uh, to my TV because uh, that gives a clearer uh, image. Uh, however, there's no colors, so uh, I need to figure out that. Well, anyway, you can uh, draw. <laughs> This one is uh, some sort of uh, uh, nutrition or uh, food program. <laughs> so you can make uh, recipes. You probably, uh, you can load another one like baking. All right, so this, these are recipes for uh, baking stuff. All right, so this is the prices. <laughs> I guess these are uh, prices from 1983 or something like that. <laughs> totally 2.34 kroner, which is uh, 0 0.23 dollars. And then you can see like the nutrition of a recipe for many for how many persons, let's say two, and uh, they are all a men, and the age is from uh, 22 to 50. <laughs> all right, there's a graph. <laughs> so it's divided into proteins and calories and iron and uh, yeah, different things, vitamins. And this is, of course, a basic program, and here's the listing. All right, that was the converting of uh, the floppies. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go through the ones with read errors a couple of more times later, but um, for now I'm thinking about uh, finishing this video. Uh, I was uh, actually planning on uh, installing uh, this uh, second floppy drive on this side because uh, that is supported uh, there are uh, screw holes and uh, yeah but uh, unfortunately i am um, missing the correct uh, cable for uh, the power instead i'm gonna take out this one and replace it uh, with uh, this better working one to remove uh, the floppy drive i need to uh, remove these two screws again and uh, lift up uh, this uh, metal plate and then we have four screws under here
well, well, there's always something that uh, don't go uh, to plan. Uh, <laughs> The power cable here is actually too short for this drive because it has uh, the contact on this side while this uh, drive has it more in the middle. So I looked through the box uh, for this machine and I actually found another uh, uh, power cable and uh, this is a little bit longer so <laughs> Lucky there, and uh, that also means that I can uh, connect the other uh, floppy drive. All right, the next uh, issue is <laughs> The floppy cable is just too short. It needs to go over here and, uh, well, it can't. So I need to lengthen it and I can just use uh, maybe this one to make an extension and uh, use a little uh, pin header to do that. Not the best solution, but I think that should work. In order for the second drive to operate as uh, drive B, we need to uh, set a jumper to select a slave instead of a master. So I just move this um, jumper uh, to the middle pin. Let's see if this thing works now with uh, two drives. Yep. Then I'm going to insert the flop in the other one and switch to B. Nope. Well, well, it seems I missed one pin in my uh, <laughs> connector here. I tried a lot of different things, but I could not get uh, this drive to work as a drive B uh, with this uh, cable. I don't know why, but uh, I gave up, but that's not a problem. I don't have any use for it anyway. I'm just going to leave it here in uh, the machine and uh, yeah, maybe for later I can take a look at it. So now I just need to remove the cover to uh, use the other drive <laughs> it's really tough glue in here Achoo. the case is a little bit fiddly to <laughs> to get on and especially if you have two drives but All right, I have uh, assembled the machine and uh, it works uh, great. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, anyway, that was it for this video. Uh, great machine and Norwegian computer history. I got a copy of most of the floppies, even though some had uh, read errors. I'm gonna investigate those further. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.